Welcome back to Oshkosh 2025 here on the campus, EAA. I'm Rex Alexander for Aero News Network, and we're in the Magniex booth. Major uh, announcement today, uh, collaboration of two uh, fantastic uh, groups of individuals. So we have Robinson Helicopter partnering with Magniex. So with me today, we have uh, David Smith, the CEO of Robinson. We have Reed McDonald from uh, CEO of Magniex. So I'm going to start with uh, you, Reed. Uh, we talked to you last year uh, with the uh, Electric Beaver and all the things you were doing there. But uh, for this, what are we looking at here in front of me? This is kind of the big key. Yeah, so the Electric Beaver's flying our 650 motor. Mm -hmm. It's a large CTOL application. And what we have here is a, is a future development of our engine technology. It's the Helistorm motor. It's 330 kilowatts. Okay. Spins at a higher RPM, 6,000 RPM really designed to power the vertical lift environment. And that's why we're excited to be here with Robinson Helicopter Company to pair this heli storm with the rest of our powertrain, power an ER-66. Okay, fantastic. And David, you've already had a relationship with the Magna X. Mm -hmm. I mean, you started flying in the R-44 already. So you've done electric and I believe you did hydrogen. That's right. Um, What's the next generation? I understand it involves your new concept, R yeah. R66? Yeah, so I think a, a key aspect of this collaboration, the ER66 that we're talking about today, powered by the Hellestorm motor and the Samson batteries that uh, Magniex provides, will give us a foundation to determine what are the key parameters for a commercial variant that customers can use in all sorts of applications like training, private use, agriculture, and tourism. All those areas have expressed interest in a zero emissions helicopter. This is one of the best ways to both build one that, that shows the current status and performance of the today's generation batteries and motors. We think it's very close to commercial capable today. We need to give this to many customers to see the trade-offs of things like these will be modular batteries that can, can give a customer the ability to hot swap or change battery configurations uh, throughout the, 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 the life of the aircraft. And so how much of that do people customers expect to use? Uh, what are the increments of performance that make sense for customers? You know, we might have a, a heavily loaded battery configuration that has two seats, or you might have versions that are uh, less, less battery intensive, but maybe carry more people for shorter distances. And so those capabilities are all available to us. So we want to get the customer feedback on that. Now, having flown the R66, I got to say, I think it's a fantastic aircraft because of the turbine and the power and the seating. So when we look at that from a cost noise and safety aspect, what are you looking for in gains using sure. the electric powertrain? So I think there's several factors that matter to our customers. One, uh, you'd mentioned noise. Noise is very important. And, and people, I think, underestimate how much of the noise of an aircraft is driven by its power plant. Um, we've flown enough of the electric variants of our aircraft to know that this is a measurable difference, one that customers are going to see, stakeholders in the area around an airport are going to feel. And I think this is something that really will make it more accessible to customers. Second to that, though, I think the direct operating costs of electric are demonstrated every day in EVs and cars. We think that that is, to some extent, traded against the early life of these batteries are going to prove whether it can meet the same sort of cycle intervals as the turbine engines or whether it's an interval somewhat less than that. That's one of the things we want to prove with this generation of battery technology and demonstrate that in the ER66 we unveiled today. Last thing you mentioned was safety, and I think we're excited that a motor like the Hellestorm can offer redundancy in a way that today's turbine engines can't. You, you're not tending to have two turbine engines to provide true redundancy in a, in a, a multi-engine form factor, but this can actually offer significant redundancy within the same form factor you see here. So one kind of body of, of an engine, but the ability to have separable elements that, that fail independent of one another. So that's a really exciting safety advantage that may open up the skies in places like Europe. Okay. So on the certification side, uh, you've been doing a tremendous amount of work and testing already. What do you see as far as the path forward with the FAA and getting your powertrain completely certified and uh, over to the Robinson, not just for testing, but you know, full-fledged uh, operations at some point? Well, we've got uh, special conditions already agreed to on our 650. Mm -hmm. And we've been spending a lot of time with the regulators, particularly the FAA. And so we've got a pathway laid out on our 650 motor towards certification. The path to get there on the heli storm isn't going to be a whole lot different. The, I guess the big difference here is that rather than we've flown six different airframes and different applications of our technology and partnering with Robinson, it'll give a pathway to not only prove this technology in the demonstrator, but partner together on the certification path. So um, a type certification on the full powertrain as opposed to just a component itself, such as the motor. 
is really the path forward to uh, getting this technology proof safe for flight. Outstanding, and you're looking at uh, potentially late 2026 for yeah, so first flight 2026, and then uh, from that, as the the motor certification and the battery, uh, both both performance and the the overall packaging gets in uh, into service, we'd expect certification later this decade if all of the things that that are needed from the regulatory rulemaking side, so finalized special conditions for the the Hellstorm and getting through the certification gauntlet on the aircraft piece. But we're we're pretty confident that. This is the time for certification of these zero emission helicopters. And they have a lot of advantages over other architectures that have that put forward. Um, so we're excited to demonstrate that to people and give our customers something to factor into their future fleet plans. Okay, well, fantastic. Gentlemen, this sounds exceptionally exciting. I can't wait to see uh, when you come out and actually start doing the testing. Mm -hmm. I've already said everything I've seen so far says you're going to be successful. So I look forward to it. Thanks again, Thanks, uh, David Jefferson. and Reed. Thanks, Greatly Rex. appreciate it. Appreciate it. For Aero News Network here at Oshkosh 2025, I'm Rex Alexander. There's a world far beyond the city lights, beyond control towers and paved runways. That's where Hartzell flies. Hartzell carbon fiber props. Stronger, lighter, faster. Delivering unmatched performance, relentless durability, and raw power for those who demand more. So here's to untamed skies, faraway places, and the prop that's always ready for what's next. Hartzell Propeller, built on honor.